While Princesses Sleep Princesses of Chadwick Castle Adventure book I thought it was going to be an ordinary day here at the castle. The weather on the moors was wet, with the rain pelting down, and our rooms were cold, as usual. My sister, Belle, and I were never allowed to play noisy games inside the castle. The whole morning we had been painting and reading and practicing our musical instruments, and now we had nothing to do but daydream. I find myself twirling my ringlets and staring into the crackling fire. Princess Earl, please use your kerchief to wipe your eyes. I kept my head still and reached for the lacy fabric hidden in my gown. Today I had on the blue brocade. I've been told the shade matched the colour of my eyes and made my hair look even blonder. Since Miss Stencil had gone back to her book, I just held on to the kerchief and continued to stare unblinking. Hey, Ella, Belle, my little sister, said. She shoved my shoulder and I turned to gaze into her green eyes. Even though she was ten, she was strong. I blinked the tears away. What? She'd ruined my contest. Why are you crying? Belle asked. I'm not. I was trying to see how long I could hold my eyelids open without blinking, and first Miss Stencil, now Belle, had interrupted me just when I thought I'd beat my personal best time. Ninety-two seconds without a blink. I stuck my tongue out at her. Not that I didn't have cause to cry. I had heard something in passing earlier today that had upset me, perhaps enough to make most girls shed tears. But I didn't. When I went to the kitchen to visit Cook, some of the servants had whispered something about Mother spending too much, and something else I couldn't quite make out. Cook had caught me eavesdropping. You'd better keep quiet today, my little princess. Your royal mother has many things to consider, and it wouldn't do for you to get in the way. My sister prodded my shoulder again. You're not very nice today, Belle said. I'm not going to tell you the secret, because you're nasty to me. She clawed the air as if she were a cat, and screeched. Sheesh! Even the four kittens sprawled at the bottom of my bed, jerks out of their sleep. They scurried to their mother, who was licking herself near the fireplace. So the secret is that you've metamorphosized into a feline? Meta what? She gave me that confused look. Metamorphose means change. Never mind. Can I get back to staring into the fire? It would keep my mind off the rumours about Mother. Some mornings we, the princesses of Chadwick Castle, were allowed to get out and wander in the garden for some sunshine with our governess, Madame Lavella. But not today, thanks to the heavy fog and the frost. Might catch a cold, our governess had warned us when we asked. So here I am, blinking at the fire. If you don't want to hear the secret, then I shall leave you to stare into the fireplace, Belle scoffed. She swivelled on her heels and turned away. Of course, I could barely see her heels since they were hidden under layers of soft chiffon. She skipped towards the open doorway that led to the main corridor. Wait! Could she have heard the same commotion I had last night? Belle and I generally slept in separate rooms. She with her lady-in-waiting, Miss Glotty, sleeping in a bed near hers. Miss Stencil's bed was placed a few feet away from mine. Last night I was awoken by scuffling outside my bedroom. I almost went to peek at the gap under the door, but I was too cold, in only my white chemise, to step onto the red terracotta stone floor. Still, I'd heard it. Tell me, I demanded. Say please, my bratty sister said. Please, happy? She grabbed our cat, Mr. Grey, in her arms and shot a sly glance at Miss Stencil. Belle's eyes looked wild, and for the first time I noticed her cheeks were flushed pink. What is it? I asked as she ambled toward me. Strange things have been happening, she whispered. First, there were noises outside my bedroom last night, so I went to peek under the door. Miss Clotty didn't stop you. Miss Clotty helped Belle dress up and dress down each day, and made sure Belle practised her pianoforte and voice exercises. Of course, she reported to our mother the Queen when Belle didn't finish her assignments. Miss Clotty wasn't in my room. 
that's why I went to the door when the noises woke me up. It was late, about midnight, I think. Miss Clotty not being in the bedroom raised a red flag in my head. If she hadn't been performing her duty, where had she been? Also, midnight was close to the time I'd heard the hurried footsteps outside my bedroom. The doors in our castle were made of solid acacia, and according to my governess, who seemed to know all the history in the world, the acacia wood was transported here all the way from the hills of Italy during the 15th century. It was at least six inches thick and had carvings on both sides. Such a solid build would not allow the slightest sound to get through, except there was a wide gap at the bottom. In fact, so wide was the opening that I could easily insert my entire hand, palm down on the floor, all the way out. What did you hear? What did you see? Shoes clattering, Belle replied. People wearing them and clopping past as if they were horses. The people didn't speak, but I believe they were all women, as if they were hurrying. What about their clothes? What did they have on? If they were mother's friends, they'd wear satin gowns with ruffles and lace, and if they were part of the working group, their clothes would be cotton and linen with fewer frills, clothes they could wear and still sweat in comfortably. We had been studying the artist Auguste Renoir, who loved to capture everyday people from working-class families. I always marvelled at the types of outfits people wore. Clothes could tell us who the visitors were. I only saw shoes. I couldn't tell what else they were wearing. Fine. What sort of fabrics worked on the floor as they passed? Have you not been listening? Only their shoes. I think they were pink, and they walked unnaturally. Pink shoes? My hand went up to my lips involuntarily. How could she not have seen the clothes at all? All the dresses we wore draped to the ground. Pink and heavily beaded with pearls and diamonds. Belle shook my arm. Tonight. Maybe we can find out tonight. Let's beg Miss Clotty to let us sleep together tonight in my room. If Miss Clotty wasn't in Belle's bedroom last night, she could be aware of what was happening while we lay sleeping. She could even be party to it. I dared not ask our mother because some things we children were not allowed to know. It was better not to question. We could find out for ourselves by asking our ladies-in-waiting or our governess, or even cook. But since we were not supposed to be up at midnight asking about pink shoes, it could get us into a bind. I'll tell her I was afraid last night. Good idea, I said. Perhaps Miss Clotty would rather not leave Belle alone and might welcome this suggestion. But we must make sure Mother doesn't find out. I heard she was upset this morning. My sister's eyes grew rounder. Her grey pupils widened as if she were afraid. Is it father? I shrugged. Maybe. I thought about what Cook had said about mother overspending and acting secretive. Was the tension in the castle related to the noises and the clopping shoes? Who were these women? New ladies-in-waiting for my mother. Or new ladies-in-waiting for us. And what were they doing? walking along our hallway in the middle of the night. Even though Belle was two years younger, we studied together. But I was tall for twelve, and stood a good head taller than Belle. Sometimes we quibbled, but most days it was fun to be with my sister, and we have shared many adventures. Tonight promised to be one of them. That evening, we couldn't wait for tea time at six. This was the biggest meal in our day.